Welcome back to Puppy Park. The park looks different today. Can you spot why? Today we're going to be looking at the weather forecast for each day of the week. The forecast for Monday is snowy. It's lucky Molly and Max are all wrapped up in their scarves and hats, otherwise they might be cold. And oh look, they've built a snow dog. Can you see it? The forecast for Tuesday is sunshine. Yippee! Peter and Bertie are wearing their hats and sunglasses. They're eating ice creams and ice lollies to keep cool. Eat them quickly, pups, before they melt. On Wednesday, it's going to be foggy. Dotty and Henry are finding it difficult to see each other on the seesaw. It's very important to stay close together in the fog so that you don't get lost. On Thursday the weather is going to be rainy. Not a very nice day for the park. Luckily Dotty and Grandpa Dog have come out with their umbrellas. They're feeding the ducks at the pond. Lovely weather for ducks. They don't mind the rain. Oh dear! The forecast for Friday is stormy. That means lots of rain, wind and thunder and lightning. Yuck! All the pups have decided to stay at home safe and cosy today as they don't like the stormy weather. Look! The stormy wind is making the swings move all by themselves. I hope the weather gets better for the weekend. On Saturday, it's going to be windy. It's perfect weather for flying kites. The pups are enjoying themselves. I hope their kites don't fly away in the wind. Hold on tight, pups! The last day of the week is Sunday and the weather forecast is sunshine and showers. That means there will be some rain and some sunshine. The weather forecast was absolutely right. It's a bit rainy but oh look, the sun has come out too. The weather is full of surprises. I hope you've enjoyed your visit to Puppy Park. We look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye bye! Welcome to Train or Plane. Play along with us. What do you think this is? Is it a train or is it a plane? It's an electric train. How about this one? Is it a train or a plane? It's a very big plane. It's called a jumbo jet. I wonder what this one is. Can you guess? Train or plane? It's a steam train. There's another one. Look closely. 
Is it a train or a plane? It's an underground train. Have a look at this one. Do you think it's a train or a plane? It's a seaplane. How about this one? Is it a train or is it a plane? It's a freight train. Let's have a look at this one. Do you think it's a train or a plane? It's a biplane. Well done! I hope you enjoyed playing along. Here we are, under the sea. It is my favourite place to be. A watery world beneath the waves, where crabs and lobsters crawl from their caves. Let's learn some shapes with our funny sea friends, and we can discover how this fishy tale ends. Square Rectangle Circle Triangle Oval Heart Star Thank you, friendly sea creatures. See you again soon. Why did the dinosaur fly? What a good question. Hello there, Mr. T. Would you be kind enough to help us answer our question, please? You would? Fantastic. How will we find out why all the dinosaurs disappeared? Mr T, what are you doing? We're going back in time? Wow, this is fun! How cute! Look, all the gentle plant-eating dinosaurs! Who are these? Oh no! Those are meat-eating dinosaurs! Quick! Herbivores! Run for your lives! 
Yikes! Phew! Well done, Mr. T. What's that in the distance? Watch out, Mr. T. That's an asteroid, and it's heading straight for Earth. Oh, no! Oh, no. What a mess. The asteroid has made such a mess that it's even covered up the sun. And look now, Mr. T. Now the sun's all covered up. The plants can't grow. And because the plants can't survive, neither can the dinosaurs who eat them. Oh no, is this really what you think happened to the dinosaurs, Mr. T? Of course, now the meat eaters have eaten all the herbivores. There's nothing left for the meat eaters to eat. I think I see now, Mr. T. But as time went by, the dust cleared, the plants grew back, and new life sprung up all over the earth. Come on, Mr. T. Let's head back to the present day. What an amazing adventure that was, Mr. T. But I think it's time we got some rest now, don't you? Good night, Mr. T, and thank you so much for teaching us about the dinosaurs. A for apple. B for bumblebee. C for carrot. D for duck. E for egg. For feather. Mm. G for giraffe. H for house. I for ice cream. <laughs> J for Jack in the Box. K for Kite. L for Lighthouse. M for mermaid. N for necklace. O for octopus. P for parrot. for Queen. R 
R for rocket. S for space. T for tractor. U for umbrella. V for van. W for weasel. X for x-ray. Y for yacht. And Z for zebra. In all the cities around the world, from the smallest village to the largest town. If you look very carefully at a hole in the ground, then maybe you'll find opposites that live underground. Opposites are very different to one another. Just like Big Jimmy and Small Paul. <laughs> Hello Big Jimmy. Hello, small Paul. <laughs> Big and small. Opposite. Opposites can be fast like berry. Or slow like half. Hello, Berry. Hello, Harv. Fast and slow. Opposite. Remember, opposites are different from one another. They can be fat, like Daddy Frank, or thin, like Mummy Thelma. Hello, Fat Frank. Hello, Thin Thelma. Fat and thin. Opposite. Some opposites can be happy, like Harry. Or sometimes sad, like Sally. Hello, Harry. Cheer up, Sally. Happy and sad. Opposites. Here comes Suki and Sid. They are opposites. Suki is tall and Sid is short. Hello Suki. Hello Sid. Tall and short. Opposite. Some can be old like Grandpa. Or young like Baby Goo. Hello Grandpa. Hello Goo.
old and young, opposite. These are the opposites who live underground. Some are big and some are small. Some are short and some are tall. Others are fat and others are thin. Some are fast and some are slow. Others are happy and others are sad. Some are old and some are young. But all are opposites and live underground. Goodbye opposites, until next time. Why do bees sting? What a good question. Let's follow this bee and find out. Hello there, Mrs. Bee. You do seem like you're a very busy bee indeed. Do you think you could find time to answer our question? You could. Fantastic. What is it that you're quite so busily up to? You're busy collecting special ingredients. Ingredients from the flowers. I see. But ingredients for what? I know, honey. Ah, you're collecting ingredients for making honey. Is that right? Oh boy, I love honey. Runny honey in my tummy. Hmm, Mrs B, that bear isn't hiding very well, is he? What do you think he's looking for? Mrs B? I really must know, why do you sometimes sting? Because it actually really, really hurts. What? It hurts you too? It hurts you when you sting? What? You die when you sting? Oh, Mrs B, how sad. But then why, oh why, especially if you die, would you sting someone? If they made you angry or scared? You sting when you're angry or scared. What kind of things would make you angry or scared then, Mrs B? Ah, the bear getting close to your home. You're scared that the bear will eat all your honey. What? Do bears eat the honey and the babies too? And that makes you angry, doesn't it? Well, no wonder. If the bear did that, you'd not only have no honey to eat, You'd have no bees to grow up and help you make it either, would you, Mrs. B? Huh? <laughs> Looks like that bear won't be back anytime soon. Thank you so much for helping us answer our question. Thank you, Funny little donkey standing in the yard. Tell us why you're braying so very, very loud. I bray to tell the story of a very precious load. I once was asked to carry down a long and dusty road. My owner called me useless, I drove him quite berserk, because I'd find all kinds of ways to get out of my work. I might try looking ill, or hide behind some hay, so passers-by would hire a different donkey for the day. This one time though, a man turned up, who would not be put off even though I hid and limped 
and eeled loud <coughs> and coughed. <coughs> I'll take him now, the young man said. Just tell me what's your fee. My desperate owner laughed amazed. Just take him. He's for free. My heart sank as I left the yard and saw my load to bear. A woman with a massive bump and bags was standing there. I won't and you can't make me help, I challenged with a stare. But then, instead of scolding me, she just produced a pair. There you go, you sweetie. Let's have a bite to eat. It wouldn't do to start our trip without a little treat. Oh well, I guess I'll help a bit, but only for today. And so I plodded onward until I heard her say, You clever little donkey, just look how far we've come. If not for all this help from you, what would we all have done? I felt my posture straighten and strength come to my knees. My plodding slow pace quickened to make the woman pleased. Then every time she woke up, she would tell me once again, thank you faithful donkey, as she rested on my mane. At last I'd reached my limit, couldn't take another step. But then I heard my lady's cry and saw her start to fret. I feel the baby's coming. He's ready to be born. So though I felt exhausted, my hooves all scratched and torn, I pulled myself together and used up all my might to take my lady further to the nearest town in sight. Then when we reached the shelter and I knew that she was safe, I fell down on the stable floor, fell flat upon my face. The next thing I remember was the unfamiliar sound of a little baby crying from a manger on the ground. Then when I saw the mother pull her tiny baby near, an angel who'd been watching lent and whispered in my ear. You see now, little donkey, what a special thing you've done. By helping carry Mary, you helped God's precious son. Hello everyone, welcome to Puppy Park. Today we are going to learn to count to ten. Would you like to help us? Are you ready? Let's count. Hello Freddy. One. One roundabout. Ollie is on the big red slide, but Henry likes the small blue slide. There's one, two, two slides. Peter and his friends are having fun on the springy animals. Let's count them. One, two, three. Three rockers. Look how much fun they're having on the swings. Who can swing the highest? One, two, three, four, four swings. Peter and Bertie are in the sand pit. How many sandcastles can you see? One, two, three, four, five. Five sandcastles. Dottie is feeding the ducks with Grandpa Dog. How many ducks are in the pond? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six ducks. One mummy, one daddy, 
and four ducklings. What else can we count? Oh look, there's some trees. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven trees. Ooh, look at those juicy red apples. How many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight juicy red apples. It's a perfect windy day for flying kites. How many kites can you see in the sky? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine kites. Look at all the colourful balloons. How many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten balloons. Well done. Great counting, everyone. Now you can count to ten. It's time to leave Puppy Park now. We hope you've enjoyed counting with us today. Come back and visit soon. Subscribe to our channel for more great videos.